KP's video news, y'all. 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 Y'all, y'all. That's right, folks. It's KP's video news, man. And I'm back. Back on my grind here. Trying to get this news out. And, you know, so the top story that we're dealing with today is uh, has everything to do with uh, Nancy Pelosi, man. It has something to do with Nancy Pelosi's husband, uh, who's, you know, husband of the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was violently assaulted by a man who broke into his San Francisco home today. Uh, and the suspect, 42-year-old David DePage, attacked Paul Pelosi with a hammer. A hammer. When officers responded to the priority uh, well-being check at 2:27 a.m. local time, San Francisco police said officers tackled the suspect and disarmed him. Paul Pelosi, 82 years old, underwent successful surgery today to repair a skull fracture and serious injuries to his right arm, his hands, and his doctors expect full recovery. The speaker's spokesperson, Drew Hamill, said in a statement, two sources familiar with the matter stated that his injuries are significant. And uh, the page allegedly entered the house through a sliding glass door. Law enforcement sources familiar with the matter stated that the subjects shouted, where's Nancy, before allegedly striking Paul Pelosi, according to two sources familiar with the matter. Nancy Pelosi was in Washington, D.C. with her protective detail at the time, according to Capitol Police. Dip, uh, DePage, uh, DePape, his name is DePape, D-E-P-A-P-E. -E. Uh, DePape, who was hospitalized with injuries, will be booked on charges including attempted murder, assault with a deadly weapon, burglary, and elderly abuse. They got quite a few felonies they got on him here. And the motive is un under investigation. But according to the Institute of uh, Strategic Dialogue, a think tank dedicated to researching extremism and disinformation, the paper likely was motivated by a wide range of conspiratorial beliefs. In the last two months, the paper has posted dozens of articles and videos to his blogs spreading conspiracies and hateful rhetoric related to COVID-19, women, Hillary Clinton, the Jewish com uh, community, federal law enforcement, uh, in other words, like the FBI, government censorship, Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, the climate crisis, uh, QAnon, the 2020 election, the transgender community, and grooming in schools. Man, he just got a, a number of things that he's been ranting and raving about on his blog. Wow. Though, no posts were specifically mentioned, mentioned uh, Nancy Pelosi. And authorities are examining a number of social media posts that appear to be associated with DuPate, DuPate with espoused conspiracy theories about COVID-19 vaccines, 2020 false election theories, frustration with the January 6th congressional hearings, and anger over the conviction of Derek Chauvin for the killing of George Floyd. Wow, this guy's a real nutcase. And the FBI is expected to seek search warrants for any phones, computers, or other devices that might be associated with DePape. And the FBI agents are also interviewing people who knew DePape across the Bay Area on Friday. Wow. According to federal law enforcement, uh, law enforcement uh, uh, agencies, and uh, President Joe Biden spoke with Nancy Pelosi today to express his support, uh, his support, and you know about this, you know after this horrible attack happened, and uh, White House Press Secretary Karine uh, Pierre said in a statement, Vice President Kamala Harris also did an interview, and uh, she spoke with the Speaker also this morning, and she condemned what she calls the act of extreme violence, and I think we're looking at a time in our country where there is so much discourse that is fueled by hate and division, by politicians, by the ex-DC dunce, ex-president, the DC dunce, 
And anyone who possesses to be a leader, I think it's really un uh, understandable that the meaning and the impact of their words. And Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said in a statement, what happened to Paul Pelosi was a dastardly act. I spoke with uh, Speaker Pelosi early this morning and conveyed my deepest concern and heartfelt wishes uh, to her husband and their family. And I wish him a uh, great and speedy recovery. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeted that he's horrified and disgusted by the attack, adding that grateful to hear that Paul is on, on track to make a full recovery. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy reached out to Nancy Pelosi to check in on Paul and said he's praying for a full recovery. And Hamill said the speaker and her family are grateful for the first responders and medical professionals involved and request privacy at this time. So now I want to give you a little background on who this guy is. Who is David DePape? And what we know so far, what we know so far about this particular guy that attacked Paul Pelosi. It's a hammer-wielding suspect who broke into the home of uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and uh, allegedly assaulted her husband Paul was identified as 42-year-old David DePape, and DePape was booked on various charges including attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, elder abuse of burglary, and other charges, San Francisco uh, Police Chief William Scott said in a news conference. And uh, so this is what we know about him so far. DePape, 42 years old, is from Berkeley, California. He actually grew up in Canada in uh, Powell River, British Columbia. DePape has strong opinions that's different from those of his family members. Teresa uh, DePape, who was, who was married to the suspect's stepfather living in Powell, British uh, Columbia, stayed, stated that DePape had left the area for California about 20 years ago. And he didn't, uh, I didn't know that David to be a violent person, she said, but he was an aggressive speaker. That's where it starts. It starts in the head and then it transfers into action. The family had not been in regular contact with the suspect, but Teresa DePape and David emailed his stepfather a couple of years ago indicating that he would visit the area and did not follow up. The strange uh, sounds too heavy characterizing the suspect's relationship. Mark DePape, David's brother, also stated that David doesn't contact family and that he hasn't seen him in over 25 years. So this is his brother said he hadn't seen him in 25 years. Teresa DePape also said David's strong opinions that differ from the views of some of the family, including his stepfather. She declined to elaborate on those views. And the motive itself is still under investigation. The motive for the attack, uh, and according to a joint statement with the U.S. Capitol Police, the FBI, and the San Francisco Police, a source familiar with the matter stated that DePape was calling out, where's Nancy, apparently in search of the speaker, and a question that also filled the house of the Capitol building as rioters breached the Capitol on January 6th. Remember that? They had all those people that breached the Capitol that were talking about talking that madness about where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Yep. Okay, folks, on to the next story here. And this is uh this this one right here is, was a shocker. They got a former Capitol Police officer convicted of obstruction in the January 6th investigation. Obstruction. So a former Capitol Police officer was convicted today of obstructing an FBI investigation into the January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol by deleting Facebook messages he sent to a rioter afterwards, federal prosecutor said. The jury found Michael uh, Riley, 51, guilty of a single count of obstruction of justice following his trial in federal court and uh, for the court of District of Columbia, a U.S. Attorney's Office spokesman stated. The jurors deadlocked on a second obstruction of justice uh, count against Riley. Prosecutor said U.S. District Judge Amy Berman Jackson declared a mistrial on that charge. And uh, so the ex-officer who uh, messaged January 6th rioter guilty of obstruction and obstruction of justice conviction carries a uh, statutory maximum of 20 years in prison, although federal sentencing guidelines typically call for less time behind bars. Michael Riley has never obstructed any grand jury proceeding, nor did he attempt or intend to do so, uh, his attorney stated. Uh, so basically, his attorney stated that Riley intended to raise legal challenges 
to the verdict with the trial court in the future possible appeals. Prosecutor said Riley was, was not on duty at the Capitol building in Washington on January 6th, but became aware of the events there, seeing that a Facebook friend was involved. He messaged a man telling him to take down what, what could be seen as incriminating posts. Riley deleted the messages after learning that the FBI had been in contact with his Facebook friend and the two men had not been in person. Supporters of uh, the D.C. Dunce stormed the Capitol on January 6, 2021, after he delivered a hate-filled speech at a rally near uh, the White House claiming that his defeat in 2020 presidential election by Joe Biden was a result of fraud. Now, looking at that particular statement, the D.C. Dunce decided he wanted to have a rally on, on the Capitol, at the Capitol on January 6, 2021, when they knew they were counting the ballots, uh, counting the uh, electoral votes that day. That's to me, is automatic, automatic guilt. It's automatic guilt. There's no other way, to, uh, other way to say it. Why would you have a, a rally on the exact same day, the exact same day, the exact same day, that the uh, Congress was meeting to count the count the uh, electoral ballots. You know, you, it was it was a setup. It was a total setup. And I tell you, man, this guy needs to be locked up. D.C. Dunch, ex-president Donald Trump needs to be locked up in prison for a long time. It's treason. Okay, on to the next story. We got an Alabama Supreme Court upheld a decision to remove a former probate judge, Randy Jinks after being accused multiple times by multiple staffers of making racist comments and exhibiting sexually inappropriate conduct while serving as a high-ranking officer of the court. Jinx was also accused of calling, get this now, George Floyd just another thug after he was killed by a former officer, Jared Chauvin. He was removed from the bench in 2021 by the court of, of the judiciary but de uh, denied most of the claims and and appeal the ruling. The Supreme Court agreed with the COJ's decision, ruling that the evidence convincingly supported his removal. After reviewing the record in this case, we conclude that the judgment of the COJ Court of Judiciary is supported by clear and convincing evidence, the Alabama Supreme Court ruled. Now, former Talladega County Probate Judge Randy Jinks, who was elected to the position in 2018, is going to have a difficult time finding a new gig. Jinx offenses, according to the nine-member panel uh, who judged judges, included one that a black staffer said took place just five months after Jinx took office in 2019 and after an employee he had just bought a new car. I can't even afford a car like that. And I'm a judge here, Jinx stated on it, uh, told employee, according to the complaint filed against him. Uh, what are you doing, selling drugs? Wow, this guy was a piece of work, man. So I'm not sure what Jinx did before Alabama voters made the mistake of putting a gavel in his hand. But if he was one of those cops who targeted black people in nice cars while making an uh, it's a rapper or it's a Nino Brown uh, bet with his equally racist and, and white partner, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. But that alleged comment was apparently only the tip of the probable, probably a Trump supporter iceberg. The family, uh, in fact, investigators who looked into Jinx ended up with a 78-page report, 78 pages, detailing allegations of racism and sexual harassment suffered by those who worked for him. Jinx has been accused of repeatedly mounting the N-word, which I can only imagine uh, happened while he was in a silent prayer hoping for some uh, kind of Negro rapture and making inappropriate comments to female employees. He's also been... Uh, like I said before, I've been called accused of calling George Floyd Floyd the thug who got what he deserved. Uh, you know when he died brutally under Derek Chauvin's knee, and uh, and in case you thought I was just projecting with that, probably a Trump supporter remarks. Investigators have also cited as evidence a recorded phone call with an employee where he joked that protesters over George Floyd deaths should stop burning things down because you're going to need something to burn down after Trump gets reelected for a second term. 
So that was a comment that he had made. So that obviously lets you know, you know, that he was a Trump supporter. Jinx, according to the Post, was elected to the Talladega County Commission and severed and uh and served as a staffer to a former Republican, Bob Riley, before he was a judge. So he wasn't a cop, but he also wasn't a lawyer because apparently you don't need to be a legal professional to be a probate judge. Denies the allegation against him, but before we get to his denial, just need to point it out that if things said about him are true, this guy really needs, you know, had a real bad thing about black people. So, I mean, this stuff goes on and on and on and on, you know. So, so he said uh, his attorney came out and said, well, he spent his entire life not being accused, not being accused as being a racist. But once he entered politics and became the first Republican to hold that office, that all changed. Yeah, they all get to want to cry the blues, man cry the blues all right on to this last last story here we have uh, a florida hip-hop artist has beaten a rap and was found not guilty after his rap lyrics were used against him in a felony court case noah williams a rapper who used the uh, moniker spinner bands was found not guilty on a charge of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon last week the jury ruled in his favor after prosecutors based part of their evidence on lyrics from a, uh, a, a rap song called My Glock. Prosecutors alleged that Spinner Ben's girlfriend who purchased the gun legally bought it for him. The prosecutor stated that in the song they referenced for the lyrics that Spinner Ben's claim My Glock cost $300 and in one line he raps about having a woman purchase a gun for him if she's over, over 18. At the end of the trial, prosecutors pointed out that the lyrics and closing arguments and stated that the date the song was released, they claimed it took place several weeks after his girlfriend bought the weapon. They also argued that 18% of Spinner Ben's DNA was discovered on the gun as well. His attorney stated that this did not prove that he was in possession of the firearm, nor did, did he use it. The rapper had previously been convicted of felony weapons charge, convicted felons in Florida are not allowed to own firearms. Based on that fact, he was facing up to 30 years in prison due to adding a gang en enhancement in the case, which, uh, based on what his attorney stated, doubled, would actually double his potential sentence. So that would be, you know, facing uh, 30 years, so that would be 60 years he would have been uh, locked up for this offense if they had been able to get away with it. So anyway, the jury found him not guilty on Thursday. <coughs> Not guilty. Yesterday they, they found him not guilty. And there's a, a movement to prevent prosecutors from using lyrics cited in songs by rappers against them. In closing arguments, uh, we discuss how artists, even though sometimes they may write lyrics based on reality that other times they, they, uh, they do not. So the example that we gave was Bob Marley, who certainly sang about events about like I Shot the Sheriff and suggested that just because he sang the song about shooting the sheriff doesn't mean that he shot the sheriff. So, which was, you know, another song that, uh, uh, what's his name, who was it, what's the guy's name, I can't, Eric Clapton sang the same song, I Shot the Sheriff. You didn't lock him up for singing I Shot the Sheriff. So, all right, folks, this is, this is how this thing works in America. You know, you got your rappers out there and you come up and you creating these videos. And I know a few rappers myself and they try to pretend like they all hard and this and that. The guys ain't never been in the streets. They never been in the streets, man. These guys are just average everyday guys, man. You know, average everyday guys with with a two parent household, mother and father at home. Never been involved in no gang banging at all. But they try to pretend that. But anyway, you know who it is. I think you know who it is. Yep. That's right. KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video. Time out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends, family, loved ones, enemies. Share. It's KP's video news, y'all. KP's video news, y'all. KP's video news, y'all. That's right. It's KP's video news.